they told us that parasites were the third world country. They knew better. Anybody, you know, you can't tell me all these people in the universities and all the smart guys in research at the NIH and all over the world weren't paying attention to parasites or these other things. Secondly, when I was in medical school, I went to the University of Rochester in 1976 to 80. During that period of time, we were taught, always look at the patient's fresh blood yourself. Don't just send the blood to the lab. You know what? Well, by 1985, they were telling my colleagues, they're just slightly older, younger than I am, saying, no, no, that's just nonsense, don't look at fresh blood. And now they make fun of people, like these nurses on these, or these uh, holistic doctors that look at fresh blood. They say, that's just nonsense what they're talking about. No, the, the, that's what the German researchers started seeing in their cancer patients. They started seeing these, they said every one of these cancer patients has parasites. I'll tell you another one, talking about uh, acquiring parasites. I remember that when, when I was, again, this was back in 1977 or 78 when I was in medical school, hearing a lecture on multiple sclerosis and they were talking about one of the risk, the risk factors. One of the risk factors of multiple sclerosis was having a, a lap dog at a young age. I thought, well, that's kind of weird. Why would that matter, okay? Because they don't know. They, they thought it was some kind of autoimmune disease, right? Dr. McDonald, a pathologist, I think he's in Florida, he um, did a series of autopsies on MS patients, and 100% of them had parasites in the brain and spinal cord. Okay, so MS is also not a Dr. McDonald, Florida pathologist, and he said he, he did autopsies on in multiple sclerosis patients, 10 of them, that died over the period of time he was doing, he was in practice doing autopsies. 10 patients, 100% of them had parasites in the brain and spinal cord. Now how do we make the diagnosis of MS? We do an MRI and you've got neurologic symptoms and we see on MRI in your brain and in your spinal cord, because this is a central nervous system problem, we see what we call plaques. But remember, plaques are just a term. It doesn't tell you etiology. When we look at an MRI, it's based on the amount of fluid in the tissue and if the t fluid is moving or not. It's that simple. So these things are just a t uh, some kind of different fluid from the surrounding tissue. It's parasites. So, cancer, and we see all these, on the MRI, you see all these spots, white or black, depending on the weighted image, all over the body. Well, we've got a paradigm that we see, oh, that can only be cancer when we see it like that. If we're starting to think about what else could call th cause things all over the body, parasites could. And here's... Now, you might be a little young to remember George Carlin, but you remember George Carlin, the seven words you can't say on TV? Most people know that, that comedy routine. He had these, you know, the bad words you couldn't say on TV. Well, now you can say them all. Okay. Yeah. 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 All right. Get your button ready. I'm not going to say those. Oh, but you might, have to, you, know, you might have to censor the six words you now can't say on TV. And those six words are, right? They don't want us to know about these. Nidazoxanide, chloroquine, hydroxychloroquine, ivermectin, benzazole, and chlorine dioxide. Those are the six words. They're all anti-parasitic drugs.